The following audio was originally recorded live and broadcast through the facilities of Trent Radio on October 4th, 2019. Hello everyone, I'm Justin Evangelo, and this is the first episode of Disenabled, where we enable the disabled. Today is going to be mostly pertaining to what the show is about, reaching out for stories of people with uh, physical disability. My main focus is to sort of talk about the life experiences and coping mechanisms of people with physical disabilities, whether they've been living with them for a long time or just temporarily because of an accident. I want to hear your story and I'd love to interview you and talk about your mechanisms for coping and also sort of your life story. I think it's great to spread the word about physical disability in terms of stereotypes so that they can be corrected. Along the way, I'm also interested in talking to people who help advocate for those with physical disabilities, whether it be a technologist or an advocate. I'm hoping in the next few weeks to have some representatives from the Trent community that are involved with that talk to me, either over the phone or in studio, in studio would be better obviously, about what their role is in helping people with physical disabilities advocate for themselves and work around what they need to in order to be successful. My first three shows are going to touch on physical disability in that it's going to be wide ranging. I'm hopefully going to interview someone who has had growth conflicts because of meningitis, someone with visual impairment from birth, and uh, and we'll, we'll go from there. I was just talking to Jill Stavely. She's right beside me, checking her email surreptitiously. And we were talking about navigating the studio in terms of me. I am sight impaired, which is why I wanted to do the show in the first place. And talked about certain things in terms of navigating. Thank God this studio is more or less pretty easy to navigate. Um, the switches are pretty clearly marked, and I'm not scrambling. Obviously, as I get more adjusted to it, I'll be scrambling a, a little less than I am now, which is almost not at all. Uh, at least that's what I hope from anyone listening to this. There's different options for people who have sight impairment in terms of uh, tactility when navigating around certain spaces like a a radio studio. Jill and I were talking about uh, certain tape or tabs that could be used and put on certain switches to help someone navigate around, say, turning up and down volume, which is key, obviously, so I don't blow your ears out or you're not constantly turning up the radio. Turning my mic up and down, different stuff like that. There's also, interestingly, braille labeling tape, which is great, comes in handy for personal use when needed. And interestingly enough, a lot of people don't know about stuff like that. It doesn't blow my mind, obviously, because it's not something you think about. But whenever I talk to people and they say, wow, I, I didn't even think that, you know, there would be such an invention or that there'd be a use for it. Well, there is. And it's it's really surprising to me to think that not only do people not think of it, but that someone who had most likely the disability thought of it. So in, in terms of innovation and necessity, if you don't know it's a necessity, you're obviously not going to know it's there. That's the fundamental goal I want to get at with this show. If people don't see something as a mainstream necessity, they're obviously not going to think to invent it or put it in place. Multiple times, I'll, I'll actually, I'll give you an example right now. In terms of academics, upcoming in my class, I have to read a graphic novel, and it has to be put into an accessible format. I know it's a required part of the course, and of course, those with issues reading the print and looking over the graphics are going to struggle with that and do need to give their teachers or whoever's advising them academically heads up. Even when they do that, It's so interesting to think about them not even thinking about it. And it's not out of meanness, it's just out of ignorance. And and that's something else I I really want to address in the coming weeks with this show, is the ignorance of people. And that's not to be mean. Because ignorance as a word means lacking in knowledge. And and it's it's not the word rude, as so many people uh, misconnotate it. And 
because you lack in knowledge, that's what this program, and I hope a lot of the programs over this radio station are here to conquer. And so even after approaching my professor about the graphic novel, they acted completely surprised as if they didn't even think about it, which is something that not needs to be eliminated, but needs to be in the back of their minds constantly. And it's not a pestering thing. It's a thing to make them aware. Conquering ignorance and making people aware of the challenges of physical disability in general is vital to a person's success. Whether you're in a wheelchair, whether you have a cane, a guide dog, there are so many little things. And that's where I'm coming from with this. It's the little things that matter most and the things we take for granted that need to be accommodated and that people are most ignorant of, whether it be reading something visual, whether it be getting in line in a crowded place to get some food from a cafeteria, whether it be you know getting into a building because you can't because there's no ramp, even though that's law now. It's the little things that matter the most. And I honestly want to tackle them. As the weeks progress, I hope to get better and better at this. I, I just want to give the viewers out there, viewers, listeners, whichever. I got a face for radio, apparently. I want to, I want to give them a general... Oh, Jill's laughing at me. I want to give them a general sense of where I'm going with this and what direction I'm hoping to sort of illustrate. So... As we close out for this session, it's brief. I hope you did enjoy my ramblings for today. It's been a lot of fun, and I now have a taste of what it's like to work in radio, so I'm super pumped for my next show. Stay tuned for next week as I interview someone who's had to cope with and experience meningococcal meningitis and the growing pains, literally, that she's had to experience. I hope you all enjoyed today. Have a good one. 